Okay, so guys, I want to try something a little bit different here today, and I want to talk about going on job interviews. <laughs> now, um, there's a lot of different reasons that I'm doing that. Um, some of you guys might know I am currently in the market for a new job, and it's definitely been on my mind a lot, and it's something that I have done repeatedly, but I have also worked for companies where I was either a hiring manager or I had some say in the hiring process okay so i figured having seen some of the people that were coming in maybe we needed to have a little bit of a refresher course on how to dress and what to do for a job interview as far as the presentation of yourself because as most of you know and have probably been told a zillion times when you go on a job interview you are trying to sell yourself to the person interviewing you. So I'm going to show you a few tips, some things that I've picked up over my 37 years on how to sell yourself to an interviewer. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Okay, so before we do anything else here, I do want to address something. I want to address what happened in the last video. <laughs> If you watch my other channel, you probably know I have actually already addressed this there, but just in case you don't follow the other channel, I did have an issue in the last video where I went from using a standard camera to using my phone and the quality was absolutely terrible. And I wanted to let you guys know that my camera did in fact give up the ghost. It croaked, it's dead, it died, it went the way of Dodo. So <laughs> I actually went out and bought a new camera. I am using a dedicated camcorder now so let me know what you guys think as far as the quality and sound and things of that nature I haven't tried anything like swatching or anything like that yet so I don't know how all that's going to work but so far I am impressed with my little Canon camcorder so we will see how this goes so just let me know what you guys think about the quality of the picture and the quality of the sound so the first thing that I want to address is actually the clothes themselves. And I'm going to take you into my closet in a moment to show you some of the do's and don'ts. But I want to reiterate to you that it doesn't matter what job you're applying for. Always go in as if you're going to be making $250,000 a year if they hire you. I don't care if you're going in for a job where you really will be paid $250,000 a year or if you are going into a job that's going to pay minimum wage. Always dress like you are going to make $250,000 a year at this job if you want to have a leg up in getting that position. No, you don't have to wear a three-piece suit. No, you don't have to wear, you know, the a ball gown or whatever, but you definitely need to not wear jeans and a t-shirt. No ripped clothing, no shirts with foul language on them, and you probably want to go at least business casual. So let's go ahead and take a look at my closet. I will show you some of the do's and don'ts as far as clothing, and then we'll come on back here and we'll talk about the face. Okay, so real quick, let's talk about clothes. Now, I want to apologize. I am trying to go through a closet purge right now, so my closet does look like a tornado came through here. So just forgive my mess, but let's talk about some clothing that you should and should not wear when you're going on an interview. Now. Some of these things would be okay to wear to a job. For an interview, not so much. So let's go through and take a look at random stuff that I've got. Let's give a big no. Let's look at some stuff that we're gonna give a big no to. Here is a shirt <coughs> that I wear on a lot of my vlogs for some reason. This is a big no-go. It's very, very comfortable. I would not wear this to work. I certainly would not wear it on a job interview. Something like this here, you've got sort of like a sweater shirt combination. I would wear that to work. I wouldn't wear it to a job interview. This, again, three quarter sleeve, nice little lace design. I would wear it to work. I wouldn't wear it on a job interview. I'm not gonna go through my entire closet showing you everything that I own. I do own a lot of clothing. <coughs> What girl doesn't right but with that out of the way let's discuss some of the stuff that you should wear to an interview okay you've got something like this here okay it's got a little bit of color to it it is not outlandish it's not crazy it's going to be a little bit loose 
It's gonna have some texture. It does have a three quarter sleeve on it. Something like this, I would wear it to work, but I would also wear it to a job interview. Something like this here as well. This one has a little bit more of a silky texture to it. It gives the appearance of having a shirt underneath with the loose neck around it. it does have a little bit of gold bling in it that is shiny, as you can sort of kind of see. And again, this is a three quarter sleeve, okay? I actually have worn this on a job interview and I got the job. When I wore this particular shirt, I did in fact get that particular job. Now you can also go this route, give the impression of a Hillary Clinton pantsuit kind of thing for about a tenth of the cost of what Hillary Clinton spends on her pantsuits. But you can do something like this. This is actually just the jacket. So you would do with this, because it is such a bright color, this is like a lime green color. What you want to do with this is you would probably wear a white or black cami underneath and then a pair of black pants with it. You don't want to go overboard on the color. Some color is okay, but you don't want to go overboard on it. Okay, this one here is actually a complete outfit. Again, this is the Hillary Clinton pantsuit for a tenth of the price. And what we've got going on here is actually quite a bit. This is actually a complete outfit. So I've got the very pink, well, it's like a salmon color jacket with the large buttons and the black accents on the collar. This isn't sitting on the hanger right, so you'll have to forgive me. This actually has a matching shirt that goes underneath it. There is nothing on that. It is just a tank, as you can see there. And then this here is actually the pants. So you've got a pair of black slacks that will go along with that. And there you go. Now, obviously you're going to have to think about what kind of job are you applying to? I'm not sure I would want to wear this particular outfit if I was interviewing for a job with McDonald's, but I would consider it if I was interviewing for an office position. Okay, so now that we've got all the clothing out of the way, let's start talking about makeup. Now, Obviously with makeup, you want to portray less of I'm really good at doing makeup and more of I'm bright eyed and bushy tailed, I'm awake, I'm healthy, and I'm here. Okay, so what I normally do, and this is, this is just on me, you guys can kind of run, you know, on your own here. I try to make my face look a little bit brighter, I try to make my skin tone a little bit more even, and I try to make the focal point be my eyes. Okay. I don't go overboard on the eyeshadow. So that's one thing that I have noticed with a lot of people. They go and they do like 15 different colors on their eyeshadow. Not recommended. A good, a good gauge is turn on your nightly news and whatever the female broadcasters are wearing on their face, that would be good for an interview. You don't want to go absolutely out of your mind with the contouring. You don't want to have the most blinding highlight on God's green earth. And you probably want to avoid multicolored eyeshadow. I usually recommend that you stay with nudes, things of that nature. Keep the sparkle to a minimum. I personally usually go for um, more matte colors. Let me give you a couple of examples of um, decent eyeshadow palettes where you can get a decent look. You can get a decent eyeshadow look out of the Anastasia Beverly Hills Modern Renaissance palette. You do have a lot of neutral colors in here and a lot of these colors that you're seeing here will be just fine for a job interview. They won't be too blinding. They won't make the, uh, they won't be distracting. You don't want to have them distracted. You want them to see that you're awake and you're bright eyed and bushy tailed, but you don't want them staring at your makeup going. Now, if you want to do a little bit of sparkle, you've got something like this. This is the, um, I bring this one up a lot. This is the Buxom Dolly's Wild Side eyeshadow palette. And again, you've got decent, you've got decent neutral tones in here but you've got just a little bit of sparkle if that's something that you want to go for. That would pass as well. 99% of the time, the palette that I use is this one right here. I do not know if this is even still in production. Okay, it's just a basic palette. I don't know what it's called, but <clears throat> this is pretty much it. This is very basic colors in here and I usually stick with 
these three here, or believe it or not, not the black, these two here. Okay, so I'll go with, like I said, either these here or the gray and the white. And I'll get into that. This is going to be the palette that I'm going to be using to do the particular look for you. So you will see what it is exactly that I'm doing. Now, obviously, any palette that you have in your collection is going to be just fine. Like I said, I would probably want to keep the glitter to an absolute no. Keep just a little bit of shine if you want it. Matte is probably the best way to go for this. And as I said, make the focal point your eyes. Don't make the focal point your mouth. So you want to stay something a little bit more neutral. I wouldn't go for your classic red or anything like that because then they're staring at your mouth instead of your eyes. And in all honesty, you want to draw your interviewer's eyes to your eyes. That's probably going to be your best bet. So go for a more neutral lip color as well. And I do have several of those. I am going to be using Tarte's Texas Toast. And let's go ahead and get this look started. Okay, so obviously you want to go ahead and put on your primers and anything like that. What I'm going to start out with after putting on the primer is I'm going to go into color correcting. And I do a lot of color correcting when I'm going on a job interview because I do have some really strange skin issues. One of which, as we have discussed in previous videos, I do have a issue with rosacea. So what I do is I use the green color, which is right here. Oh my God, I'm still getting used to my camera. Um, I use this green color right here to cover up some of the more red areas, especially on my nose, because that's gonna be a focal point. And then I come in with this color right here which is a more peachy tone and I put that underneath my eyes because <sighs> okay being 37 years old I'm starting to develop some mm, more aging issues and one of the issues that I have noticed that I am developing and I can't see it in person when I'm looking in my mirror I can't see it but under here in my eyes I'm starting to get like black bags they show up on camera, they show up in photographs. I can't see them in person, except for right in here. I can see it. But what I do is I use the color correcting because for some reason the foundation seems to bring it out and really make it obvious. So I put this stuff on there to counteract that weird coloration that comes in. And I think most of it is actually shadowing because my eyes are a little bit more sunken. So I'm thinking a lot of it is actually shadowing, but I use that color correcting to do away with that shadowing and help to make my face look a little bit more awake, okay? So let's go ahead and start on some of the color correcting. Now I'm starting out with the green to color correct on the red, so we're going to start working on my nose. Boy, I am very red here today. If you have rosacea like I do and you've got large swaths of skin that are very red, you can actually get a green primer, which I do normally use, but I didn't bring it with me in here for some strange reason. Yeah, I didn't bring it in here with me for some strange reason, so I'm kind of dabbing this on the worst areas. And what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to use my rosacea to my benefit so that I don't have to put on blush. And I have talked about that in rosacea in uh, my rosacea video I talked about using my rosacea to my benefit now I do have a couple of face craters that are very red and inflamed and I'm going to dab that on there as well don't worry I'm gonna blend this out a little face crater over here now, pretty much, I'm going to leave. Um, I'm going to leave my cheeks alone because, like I said, I am going to use. I am going to use my rosacea to my advantage, so that I can avoid using blush. Now, I'm going to use this weird thing from Eco Tools to blend that out. Now, if you are using green color correcting and any other color correcting really you only want to put it on the areas that are really affected it's like you don't want to make your entire face green because it will actually show up under your foundation it's designed to cancel out what's already on your face 
So if you put it on areas where you don't really need it, it's going to be obvious under your foundation. So, and we don't want that, especially green, because then they think you're an alien and you know. Okay, so the next batch of color correcting that I'm doing is actually on the, um, the light brown under my eyes because I just want to brighten my eyes up a little bit and hide those dark shadows and I am actually going to go in with it on my finger and now it is concealer time and I am using the Bare Minerals Bare Skin Concealer. Hello. There we go. back in with this weird thing again <sighs> and dab all that crap out. Okay, so everything is blended out now. This is where we go in for the eyes. Now the reason I'm going to do my eyes before I actually put on my foundation is because if I do end up getting some fallout, I can kind of brush it off. You know, you can do your eyes before you do your color correcting. I generally don't just because I need to see what it is that I have to work with today because my face doesn't look the same from day to day. So I do all my color correcting and my concealer first, then I'm going to put on my eyeshadow and then I will put on my foundation and we'll go from there. So I am actually going to go in with that Lorac case that I was talking about this pretty little thing so what I'm gonna do first now you can use your concealer for this I don't I use primer and I use the Urban Decay I always use the Urban Decay eye primer potion uh, a lot of people do use their concealer and concealer does work very well but you do have to set it with powder and all that good stuff and I just don't have time for that so I just use primer I am going to use this shade right here, which is not exactly matte, but I am going to use that all over my lid, and that's where we're going to start. And yes, I am going to use this absolutely awful mirror to do it. Now what I'm going for here is pretty much, there's a little bit of shine in it, a little bit of brightness, and it just gives me a nice, even flesh tone. way up with this make sure it gets all the way down to my lid all the way down to my lash line and I'm gonna bring it up like so and then we'll come over and do it on here as well and I want I'm using this nice fluffy brush because I'm trying to keep it light I don't want my makeup jumping out at the interviewer. I want bright-eyed and bushy-tailed to jump out at the interviewer, so that's all I want jumping out at them. Now I'm going to come in with this little brush here, and I'm actually going to use this gray color right here in the middle, just a very little bit in the crease and the corner. This is gonna sound really crazy, but I'm gonna put this on. My brush is shedding and I'm not happy about it. These are brand new brushes. I just got these and now I have hairs in the corner of my eye. That's great. Okay. I'm gonna put it just in the corner and in the crease and it's gonna be just a light layer all the way around and I'm going to keep on smudging and smudging and smudging 
Now, I'm not doing a transition crease and I'm not doing all that stuff. We are pretty much going to stick with this, okay? And I will blend it out, I promise. Don't get too freaked out. I'm do the same thing on the other eye. I do not like the amount of hair that is coming out of these brushes, or at least this one. These are brand new. Like I said, I literally just got them this afternoon. They arrived in my mailbox. And they are Morphe brushes. This is the first time I have bought anything from Morphe, and so far I'm not pleased with this particular brush. Okay, I need to get a little bit more gray on here because I went too dark on the other side. Okay, now. What I am going to do at this point, now that I have my crease color and my corner color, is I'm going to get myself a big fluffy brush. I'm going to get this puppy right here. Okay. Now, this is going to sound counterproductive, but what I'm going to do is you can kind of see, I'm hoping you guys can see my color here. I'm going to take that gray part and I am going to buff it down to almost nothing. Okay. And the reason, again, I'm doing this to highlight not my makeup skills, but to highlight my eyes. Okay. I want to look awake and healthy and full of life. And in order to do that, I'm actually shadowing my eyes rather than trying to highlight the fact that I can do my makeup. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to come in here and we are going to blend and buff. Now you don't want to, obviously you don't want to make it completely disappear, but you do want to blend it in enough that it doesn't pop because we are not going for anything popping. Look at all the hair coming off of these brushes. What the hell is going on with these brushes? Dang, YouTube, you told me Morphe brushes were good. These things suck. <laughs> I am not happy. I am not a happy girl right now. I still have hairs from the last brush stuck in the corner of my eye. And now it's down on my cheek. This looks like that one ornery um, eyelash. I'm hoping after breaking these in a little bit that I won't be shedding hairs all over the place. Okay, anyway, let's go back to doing what we're doing. If you can see what I did there, I blended that gray down almost away and I blended it fully into what is in, what is on my lid. Now I'm gonna do the same thing with the other eye. And I'm just going to go back and forth and I'm going to blend it up. You want to go up with it. Don't go down, but go up. Now, what I did here is I'm trying to not make it obvious that I'm wearing makeup. Now, obviously you can tell, yeah, I'm wearing makeup, but I'm not trying to make it. I'm wearing makeup. <laughs> Do you know what I'm saying? I hope, I hope what I'm trying to portray here is, is making sense. Now I'm going to go back in with this puppy and I'm going to do the brow bone with this white color that's in here. And again, you don't want to go too nuts. This one is actually quite shiny. And you probably want to pluck your eyebrows before you do this, which I didn't do. I'm highlighting all the places where I probably shouldn't have any of my freaking hair. That's quite shiny. Okay, I do. I know I do this every single time too. So, what we're gonna do, because I did, oh wow, you can kind of see that, can't you? I am going to put that back. What is going on? Okay. And here we go. We're gonna buff that down too. Now, it's okay to have a highlight that's kind of strong. You just don't want to do it all over your face. So when you come in and you do your contouring, wait till you see how I do my contouring. You're gonna love it. We're not going to do Kim Kardashian contouring because in all honesty, when you go to an interview, if you show up contoured like crazy, a couple of things are gonna happen. One, you're gonna end up either, ha you're either going to end up with an interviewer that's going to expect you to do that every single day, or you're gonna have an interviewer that looks at it and goes, oh, you spend way too much time doing your makeup. <laughs> okay, so now that I have done that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back in with this dark brown right here. 
and this little brush and I am going to line my eyes. Now I'm going to take just a little bit and again you don't want to go too harsh but we are trying to attack we are trying to bring the eye of your interviewer to your eyes because you want them to make eye contact. So what I'm doing is I'm putting it right down at the lash line. Now I have gone full out where I didn't do any color like I just kind of did a flesh tone and a crease and then I went a little harder on my eyeliner and I'm not doing that for this video because I have actually had better luck not going that route just doing a little bit of soft to open the eyes and to brighten your face up just a little bit now also avoid the giant cat eye wing okay you don't want to come out here and, and be winging yourself all the way out don't do that you want to make it nice and subtle because again all you're trying to do is highlight your eye you're not trying to make it look like i can match my cat eye wings they don't care okay they want to just make sure that you are actually awake and that you are bright-eyed bushy-tailed so highlight your assets which is why I am going very light on my eyeliner. Now on the bottom, I am also not going all the way over. I am going from about the middle of my eye, right under the pupil, to the corner. Okay, so I'm going from right about here to the corner, and then I'm brushing it out. I just stabbed myself in the eye with a brush, which is unfortunately a daily occurrence. Now I know that all the things I have said, somebody's going to get angry at me and go, oh, I, I got my last job and I did this and I did that with my makeup. You do whatever the hell you want, okay? If it has worked for you in the past, then you rock that, okay? So you do whatever the hell you want. This is just my recommendation of a way to get a leg up but it's your face it is ultimately your job interview why is this one piece of hair just not wanting to go away anyway like I said it is your face it is your job interview and you can do whatever you please with it so if you have had luck going into a job interview with neon purple eyeshadow and gigantic cat wings have at it I have not had that kind of luck. I haven't attempted it. I have not had that kind of luck. Please also take into consideration the fact that I am also not 20 years old. 20 year olds can get away with a lot more as far as your makeup is concerned than somebody like me can do. Cause I ain't 25 years old anymore. If I walk into a job interview with neon makeup on, the interviewer is just going to think I'm a fool. Okay, of course you've got to do lashes, so I'm going to do, this one is from Benefit, this is the Bad Gal Lash, and again, not going to go crazy. And I'm not going to do false lashes. I don't normally recommend false lashes, but you need to kind of know your own lashes in this situation. If you have very sparse lashes, very short lashes, etc etc a fake lash wouldn't do you bad so the eyes themselves are done okay okay so let's go ahead and discuss the foundation I'm going to do my foundation first and then I will do my brows because I don't do I know a lot of people do um, where they contour around the eyebrows to make it I don't do any of that. For a job interview, I don't necessarily recommend it either. When it comes to contouring for a job interview, less is more. Okay, so I am using the Estee Lauder Double Wear Nude. And I use this in most of them. This is a sheer foundation, which is why I go ahead and use my rosacea to my benefit. Oh my god! <laughs> I 
just sprayed like a gigantic glob out of it. So we're gonna have to be quite cautious with this now. I'm actually gonna go ahead and use my Beauty Blender-esque doohickey from e.l.f. The reason I don't use the pad on the Estee Lauder tube is I, I just haven't figured out how to use it correctly, and like I said, I end up looking like I have leprosy. I want to cover up the more extreme issues on my face, but I don't necessarily want to hide my face either. I want to give that appearance of being awake, being healthy, being alive, but here I am. I do care about my appearance, but I'm not going to spend six hours a day doing my face because I'm not. I'm going to show up to work once in a while with no makeup on because I didn't feel like putting it on. So this is what you, this is what you see, this is what you're going to get. You're going to have to deal with it because there are going to be days where you're gonna get it in all its glory. Okay, so for my very minimal contouring, I am going to use the Naked um, Urban Decay Naked Flush Palette, which is this one here, and this is in Native. This is also my go-to. Now, watch what I do with the contouring. We're not gonna do the whole up and down the hole here and framing this and frame it, no. We're gonna use a fan brush. I'm going to get a little bit on there and I am going to shake off the excess and I am going to go across here like this. Okay. Because what I'm going for is natural. Realistic, natural. Okay, and I'm just trying to brush a little of that on across here because that is exactly where I get sunburned when I go out. Boy, that looks terrible on camera. <laughs> okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna clean off my fan brush a little bit and I'm gonna come back in. I'm gonna blend it out just a little. And I'm gonna come I'm gonna come in long ways long ways and do it like that. Okay, so what I want to do is I actually want, this doesn't look as bad in person, I don't know why that looks so awful on camera. Um, what I'm actually trying to do is I'm trying to just give that actual sun-kissed appearance, okay? And that is where I would get sunburn if I was out in the sun. So now I'm giving the appearance of somebody who spent some time outside, which I normally do. However, I don't know what tan skin looks like because I burn, okay? So I don't tan, I go from I go from the whitest person on the face of the earth to being the reddest person on the face of the earth. I don't want to go too crazy with it, so there you go. You've got your contouring right up in here, and you got your contouring right up in here, and I am going to call it good. Now, I will do a little bit, a little bit of their highlight. The highlight in this particular kit is quite vivid, so you need to be quite careful with it. I'm going to do just a little bit right in here, right in here with the fan brush, fan it on, because I don't want to be too matte, but I am going to go over it with matte powder. I'll come right down the bridge of my nose, getting a little bit in the T-zone, and just a little right in here for effect and that is it there is no blinding highlight there is nothing like that we are going for again natural awake alive bright happy thrilled life is good it's awesome now before doing my powder i'm going to go ahead and i'm going to fix my eyebrows because i have totally screwed them up now again when i do my eyebrows I go for filling them in because I have some weird sparse areas on my eyebrows so I use the spoolie just to brush them out now 
again, you do what you want with your eyebrows. I know a lot of people do that little front fade and all that. What I do with my eyebrows, and this is an always thing because I ain't 20 years old, I don't look good with a little front fade, I just fill in my eyebrows so that I look like I have eyebrows. If I go too crazy with my eyebrows, you guys have seen it because it showed up in some of my videos, if I go too crazy with my eyebrows, I look like a weirdo. And there is unfortunately a very, very fine line. So I am actually going to use, this is the Auburn from Anastasia Beverly Hills, and it is this duo, but I am going to use the lightest color over here. So let's go ahead with that, and I am going to use very little of them, just dabbing because if I don't, I look nuts. I'm going to fill that in like this. Just a little bit. And then, I'm going to come back in with a very small, very, very small amount of the darker, because I have dark eyebrows because I have dark hair. Now my eyebrows get a little bonkers towards the back end. As you can see, I don't have much of a tail you can, over here on my eyebrows. Okay, so what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to create a finished eyebrow. And I think I am achieving that. So I'm filling in all this stuff up in here. And again, I would normally have plucked my eyebrows, but I didn't. Because, quite honestly, I didn't think about it. And nine times out of ten, I'm not going to remember to do it in real life. One last time, just to normalize a little bit, I am going to brush this through again. Actually, I could really use some eyebrow threading. Oh. Man, people in my life need to tell me when my eyebrows are tore up. Okay, now that everything else is done, last but not least, I am going to use the Laura Geller, and this is the Matte Maker Powder, and it looks very, very white. It looks very, very white. Here's what it looks like. This is my all-time favorite powder. It is a pressed powder, obviously. I use that with this little kabuki brush that I got from e.l.f. Cosmetics, and I go ahead and I pound it around, and I kind of kill some of those crazy highlights that I put on my face that I didn't really mean to put on my face. So, here we go. And we do it in circular motion. And I need a better mirror. Look at this, look at this mirror. You see that? Can you see that mirror? This is clear plastic, and this is the mirror. Okay, so we're going in circular motion, like this. And yes, I am going to go over that highlight, because I want to tone it down a little. Ah! That includes that crazy highlight I have in my brow bone. Now, last part of the look, but certainly not least, lipstick. This is, as I said earlier, this is Tarte lip paint. This is the Tarte Tardis lip paint. And this is in Texas Toast, which I do not know if it is still on the market. It was one of those specials. It was, what is it, Graveyard Girl? She did it. And I think the run for that is actually over. Which is a shame, because I really dig this. And that's the finished look. Now, when choosing the makeup that you're going to use for a job interview, I highly recommend picking your most favorite products, your most favorite foundation, your most favorite powders, all that good stuff, because when you're wearing your favorite stuff, you are more confident, and that is exactly what you want to exude to an interviewer, is pure confidence and girl power. <laughs> so, good luck on your next job interview, guys. I hope you like this. Please like, comment, and subscribe, and also hit the bell icon to be notified so that you never miss another video as long as you live, hopefully. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye.